I just want to take this time and thank fucking Manny Pacquiao, man. This guy's shout out to the Filipinos. 42, 43 Filipino. You know, you guys are savages. You guys are, you know, your women are sexy. I've dated some Filipino, very forgiving oh, yeah? women. Oh, for sure. Fat asses, you know, very oh. giving and submissive. I'll tell you, some comes- of them are hoes. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> some of them are hoes. I've met the hoes and I met the nice girls. And I'll, I'll tell you, both professionals, no hard feelings, none of that. Yeah, yeah. Baby, did they win? They won, baby. 2-1. Woo! Fucking last minute goal, too. Woo! So I was at the game there with my with my dad. And uh, we haven't... The last game they had in Vancouver was a year and a half ago, man. Damn. A year and a half ago. A year and, that was, and a half ago. And I was telling my dad, that I was like, Dad, the last time we were here was also the last time that there was a game here. That was mm. like over 500 X days ago or whatever. Jesus. Fucking crazy. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm glad the Whitecaps win. Honestly, anything out of Vancouver, I support it, but I just don't care. <laughs> Let's start it off, man. Let's start it off easy. Okay. Easy? Yeah. What you got? Yeah. You know what a, an estimator is? Estimator? Yeah. Yeah. So you estimate the costs of, of a certain project, yeah. right? At now, either, either time or cost or both. Yeah. 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 yeah which is fair. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I want you to estimate this. Okay. In the possibilities of life. Okay. And the ones that you've experienced, what is the worst red flag you see in women nowadays? Like the number one thing that like you see this and you're like, you're, you're running away. You're flying away. Obviously, regular shit. It's like murder. You know, this person. Yeah. Like, okay. That's you know kind of I mean? like, that's I mean, too, that's obviously. Sure, that's not a red flag. That's like, you know, fucking, that's like a, a bomb going off. Exactly. So th- that aside, the simple shit aside. We're talking about the gray area. You know, this is sure. 50 shades of gray, baby. Sure. In, of all things, in like everything. We're talking about every fucking thing. I'm talking so like you're saying my, my first red flag for me to like. Okay. So, so, so let's say you don't notice that she's superficial, but you notice that she's a hoe. So that's not your mm-hmm. first red flag. I thought that was one of the obvious ones. That's not obvious. Oh, that's not obvious. That's not obvious. How's that obvious? Because hoe, what does hoe mean? Right? Hoe is what a very general mean? term of endearment. Getting thrown around these days in 2021, you know, yeah, I mean? yeah, it's sure. not something you sure. can actually put a number on. It's sure. a quality, so not a quantity. Wh- when you're saying "ho," what do you mean by that? What do I mean? I'm asking yeah. you the question. You're flipping it on me. No, because you're the one who said it. Okay, I take over. As the red flag, um, this is the problem with "ho." "Ho" can be determined based on the person judging. Sure. So your "ho" is going to be different than my "ho." That's a good. That's a very good point. So my "ho," it's again what. It only matters if you care what the person's like the guy yeah. is trying to say. But my hoe is somebody like it's not a number. It's, it's a mentality. An, it's a mentality. Yeah. Right? It's a take, take, take mentality and it's a take without equal responsibility of what you're taking. So if you're taking something from me, you have to understand you have to give me something in return. Okay, so what do you mean by that? Okay, for example. We know this, right? As a man, someone breaks into the house. Who's going to go to the door? Who's going to go check out who it is? It should be the man. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if I'm if I'm paying for, let's say I'm paying for dinner. Yeah. You're giving me all the signs. Yeah. You should not curve me end of the day. And if you do curve me, mm-hmm. that's another reason why I shouldn't pay next time I meet a girl. Yeah. And the next time and next time and next time to the point where now, right? People come up to you and say, who hurt you? Who yeah, hurt yeah. you? And yeah, shit, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, no, nobody hurt me. I'm just a consequence of my experiences with the opposite sex or right. whatever you're into. You know, you're into guys, you're into girls, whatever. Sure. sure. Um, yeah, man, that's that. That's what a hoe means to me, man. It's someone, so wait. So a hoe is just someone who doesn't give you what you want. No, hoe is somebody that doesn't understand the 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 set responsibilities on the table. OK, for example. That aside, let's mm. say, for example, I'm super alpha male or I'm like super beta. Regardless, I either pay for it or I don't. Right. Yeah, sure. And we keep going and keep going. Eventually, if you move in with me and we get into a relationship. Yeah. I have to start paying for everything most of the time, because if I'm making more money than you, which is usually the girls that I go for, I'm making more money than them. Yeah. So if I'm doing that. Then there is a set responsibility for me to take over certain areas yeah which means you have duties as well mm-hmm. right when you don't do your duties but you expect me to do mine mm-hmm. 
you're a hoe. That's that's your definition. That's of a hoe. hoe. That's, that's a, very, a hoe. That's probably the first time I've ever heard anybody define the word. Hoe that's like a that. hoe. That's very interesting. And another thing. There's aspects of hoe, right? I told you hoe's not a number. I, you notice I never even said a number. Yeah. Right? It's a quality. Sure. Right? These are all the qualities a hoe has. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not one thing. Yeah. That's why it's crucial as a guy to be able to see these things and seek them out mm-hmm. very early before you waste your time. Yeah, yeah. Because there's 8 billion people in the world, man. You're going to come across 100,000 in your life mm-hmm. if you're doing it right. Yeah, yeah. Right? So that being said, you have to notice these things and we're just trying to say things that help other people so they don't waste their time mm-hmm. later on like yeah, someone's yeah. listening to this and they're like okay well you know some 17 year old or some shit 16 year whatever yeah, yeah you want them not to waste their time one of the one of the other things is like if i look at your instagram mm-hmm. and you got like ten thousand fucking you know followers and yeah, shit yeah, yeah. every bit vi- if i check out your first three pics or videos Mm -hmm. and you got like 40 dudes saying what's up Mm -hmm. even if you curve all of them you'd have too much sustainability for different options for me to be interested in you're a hoe so you could never date a model any kind of model i'm not i'm not talking about like your typical like any kind of model date date and relationship to me is different though you could never be in a relationship with any kind of model then is what you're saying why would i want to be why would I want to be? Why would I want to be in a relationship with a model? Why not? She has too many things to take her away. Why would I? Why would I do? I would date them. Would I get with them? Mm-hmm. See them? Hell yeah. Would I take them seriously? Probably not. You got your ass out. Yeah. And like, there's different types of models. You, m- I might date a model, but she might be like the the very few percentage that aren't like ass cheeks out every fucking Tuesday. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that might be a possibility, but it's a very Okay, how many models do we have? How many numbers of them don't put ass cheeks? It's like a very small percentage. Not even of just that, but dude, you got to realize that modeling is a very short-term <laughs> life yeah, thing for most yeah. for most girls. I mean, how long can you model, really? Like, well, a lot of girls don't even, don't even feel like getting. A lot of girls just only do it for like two years. Yeah. But if you meet her during those two years, you're viewing her as a model. And you're like, well, I'm not. I'm ruling myself out of getting a relationship with this girl because of whatever. Listen. But then you meet her like two years later. Yeah. When she's like, you know, 32 mm. and she's like, oh, yeah, I, was, I just did because like I, I was having someone someone sent me an offer to do modeling off your body. That's yeah. What but it's like under. I'm talking about a model agency. Yeah. OK. Some dude sees you like, hey, yeah, pay you 10 grand yeah, yeah. to do some whatever. And then yeah. you're talking about literally like showing tits and vaginas <laughs> on fucking OnlyFans. Hey, hey, be respectful, man. Some of these OnlyFans people hey, man, are single that, moms. Did you hear stuff? that they, they, uh, they're, they're going to stop doing it in October? Yeah, they're I going heard. Fully le- legit. Woo. What does that mean? Fully legit. No nudity. No oh, adult, damn. no adult content of any kind on OnlyFans starting so, October twenty twenty one. But when you see stuff like that happens, mm-hmm. it's just luck of the draw. The same luck that made them that way that they made money until now is the same luck that they can't make money from. Whenever point, when is it? October. October, yeah. Right. So it's just my opinion. You know, it might be a controversial one. It might be a hot topic one. People might say I'm a hater for that, and that's okay. But listen, I firmly believe if you Woman, man, whatever, transgender, whoever, if you make, you make a thing, you make a brand, you make a business, you make whatever, you make something out of nothing, a, a scratch. You're some sort of, you know, late term pioneer in a certain way, yeah, in a yeah. certain aspect, in your own eyes, in your own life, you're a pioneer. You work hard at it, you struggle through it, you make it, you get help, whatever. You struggled, you work hard, you put hours in. Yeah. That's respectable. What, whatever you do, whether you're a porn star or whatever, that is that's sick. I respect F- Alexis Texas the same way. I sure. I respect fucking who is it? Fucking pipes. Whatever the fuck his name is. Pipes. Yeah, steel pipes. What's his, this guy's name, man? Steel pipes. Yeah, bro. This guy was like hot in 06. This is a, a porn star. What yeah, is this? it's like a, this like black guy. The fucking got like a 14 inch cock, man. He's like a famous guy. <laughs> Bro, this guy, this guy's low key, <laughs> this man. Guy. Dude, you gotta I do don't more research. The guys, man. You gotta do more research on Pornhub, my the guy. Pipes. Listen, the, I'm gonna tell you what you told me. The more time you spend time on yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. why don't you spend it on instead of Wikipedia? Look up Pornhub sometime. My I guy. do, but I don't memorize Jesus you know Christ. black guys from 2006. I you, wasn't don't watching you porn back then. Don't pick up their game though. Don't I wasn't pick, watching porn back hold then. Hold on, but you don't look at like classics. <laughs> no, not those. Dude, classics. this is the thing. Okay. You have to look at everybody 
the, I believe you have Listen, to look. Don't at, be shaming me because you can't fucking remember some black dude's dick. No, no, no. That's I'm not, on I'm you. I'm not shaming you. I'm just letting you know. That's like, on you. You pick up game. Like you know how you're a kid and you watch Kobe Bryant and you're like, okay, I gotta, I gotta learn how to do his fadeaway shake. Sure. Boom. I gotta do that, right? Then you look at my guy Pipes, right? Steel Pipes, whatever the fuck is. <laughs> Steel Pipes, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're like, yo, you're ridiculous. This guy is bouncing two girls simultaneously, Listen, the, like out of orbit. Not, if, if you're getting it's your sex, skill. if you're getting your sex game from porn, you need to redo some shit, man. No, no, no. You. It's not that you learn your sex game. It's that you pick up what you can pick up. Sure. Right. It's the same analogy. We go back a few days. Ago. But <laughs> that a test. Whatever, dude. I was gonna say seven and a half, which is a fact. But like, I think it's, when, it's a lie. When, when you, when you, when you say a dude got a fourteen inch dick, even if you come out with a nine, yeah, you, you came in small. You know what I mean? You're taking a Tesla to a semi truck rally. Come sure. on, son. Anyway, going on from that. But what I'm saying is you pick up what you can and you go from there. Okay. Anyway, that's my view. You you told me your red flag, right? You want to retract anything right now or what? Uh, well, if, if we're saying that the, the whole thing isn't obvious, and yeah, sure, obviously that, that's, that's the number one. Listen, w- when I meet or even talk to, to, to girls for the first time, I'm already like – trying to figure out for myself if this is someone that i want to either go out with on a real on an actual date on or or potentially get to a relationship and i look at things like okay is this girl coming off as self-centered is this looking like she's like is she self-centered selfish or like a negative in any way is she talking shit about people is she- yo check out the fucking thing embers Estimated cock size, basically. <laughs> <laughs> sponsored uh, shirts, hundred percent. Backdoor Bosnia, what's up, my guy? Uh, how's the bush, man? Well, sponsored shirts. Hell OG, no, man. OG Mudbone. That's what they think it is. That's not who it is, though. Uh, does the shirt say White P? I white think caps. There's a, white caps is what it says. White caps, bro. No, just porn. You must watch uh, OF videos in your spare time. Only fans. Fucking OG Mudbone. <laughs> yeah. That's what Mr. P- That's fucking Steel Pipes. OG fucking. It's not OG. That guy made one video in his life. Really? Yeah. That, you know OG Mudbone? No, no, I'm ta- I, I know the guy. I know yeah. the guy. I know the guy. I know what he, he died, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he died. He, he, I know. Made, I know. Like, the t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's not that guy. Yeah. Um, fucking, dude, seven and a half millimeters, dude. Minus seven and a half. The it ground. retracts in. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, dude, I don't know how the fuck we got those fucking animated emojis. That's not, we didn't send, he's talking about embers. Embers has the animated oh. emojis. Yeah, cool. Sick. All right. Sweet. So yeah, th- those, are, those are my red flags. Yeah. Like, if you're being selfish, self-centered, or like negative in any way, yeah. I'm automatically just not going to want to talk to you anymore. And then once we like get into whether it's like a first date or, or whatever, then maybe I'm asking you more questions like, okay, do I get the impression this girl sleeps around a lot? Like, does she... What are some impressions? Tell us some some of our young kings. Like, what are some things you pick Ooh, up that's quick? A good give me, one. give me two, quick? three. Quick, two, three. Like, you see a girl, you're like, she's a hoe. What is the two, three things that you get picked up on? I think the easiest ones, if if she talks about her, <laughs> like, okay, one obvious one for a lot of people that may not realize, if this girl parties a lot, yeah, chances are party. You do? Do we mean like going out every? Um, yeah, I'm talking like going out every Friday to like the clubs and because we're talking like to our young kings. Yeah, out yeah, there. young kings. Going out to the clubs all the time, going mm. out parties. All the, most likely Maple Ridge slot, baby. Most likely that shit's going down, right? Mm. So your complete opposite are like the quieter girls. Who's like, oh yeah, I don't really go out that much. Like I really just like you know hang with the girls. Sometimes we'll go out like hiking and stuff. That that that's like the easy. So when way. you say it like that, right? Yeah, you say it like that, right? Yeah. What is one thing you you just said that you don't describe in a hoe? What's another thing you just oh the, right now? the volume like how loud they are? How nope. We want another try. What submissiveness? Oh yeah, how you described yeah, yeah. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a nerdy that, that, girl. That's like the, the complete opposite. Complete right? opposite. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's so let's go into that too. Yeah. Um. The submissiveness, like how submissive, like how much do you want to lead? Because. I would consider myself more traditional thinking than you are. Yeah. I want to lead 100% of the time. It's sure. not, I'm not saying like it's a Muslim household. Yeah. But if I'm busting my ass, yeah, yeah. I want to know. I want to be dispatched. I want to know what the fuck's going on. Sure. I want to know if my kid got into a fight. I want to know if fucking, 
you know, you're going to go to a party with your, you know, who's at the party. Yeah. yeah. I want to know this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm putting money down. I'm putting time down. Yeah. Right. So, of course, I want to know that. I think. What do you think? Like? I'm, I'm similar in some ways with that. Cause, and, and I've, I've mentioned this before. And it, even to other girls, I've mentioned this before, like girls that I've been in relationships with. And, and it's funny because that's at some points during relationships, it almost like falls into place without you having to say it out loud. Yeah. So if you as a guy, you're automatically just, you just start paying for, for like the dinners. Mm. You're not saying, Oh, Hey, I'm going to start paying for all the dinners. You just start doing it. And then it becomes assumed. And then if your girl starts cooking for you and then you're expecting that Listen to me. You, without you saying it, those those values that you had for yourself right without you having to say them out loud they actually if once they start happening for you and you continue doing them right then they become what you what you actually want in the relationship so all of a sudden once those things are not there then you're like hey what the fuck babe mm. you used to cook mm. dinners when i got home and now we're not doing that anymore yeah. what's the deal yeah or like hey you know that i'm gonna clean on fucking saturdays mm. but the deal was that not the deal the unsaid it's when people start saying like unsaid the, the things unsaid yeah you were gonna iron clothes and whatever on the sunday yeah what's going on here yeah a lot of those things happen without you like sitting down and discussing them like it's not like you sit down with your girl and it like, only hey. happens hold on it only happens if you have the right girl that understands these mentalities which mm -hmm. is very hard to find in this new age and to be fair like it's not gonna be even if you find like the right girl don't say it like that because there's so many right girls. No, but we'll that's, why I, that. that's why I said it like this. We'll the right that. girl, you're going to... The right girls, yeah, girls in the world that could be the right girl. You, and when I mean you, I mean like you, the young king, or like us, whatever. Yeah. We're all inherently fucked up. How? <laughs> we got a lot of issues in the How? sense like we're not all the same. So... Are we? Or are we not? No, we're 100% not. So there's going to be certain things that I'm going to want that you're not going to want and vice versa. There yeah, gonna be some do very. Like, do you like a nice booty or no? Hundred percent, bro. Okay. <laughs> we both share some traditional mindsets. I understand it's a free fucking state. It's the, they don't even have the type of organized um, government. <laughs> just cut into that. <laughs> Intro the people, man. <laughs> Intro the people. So okay. Afghanistan, America has <laughs> just fucking. Just run into it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I just balls deep, man. That's how we go. Uh, Afghanistan is basically going through in, some deep ass shit right now. In a way where. They have no help from any government body to help them combat with Taliban. Um, and Taliban has pretty much, they're, they're a gang that has all the ammo, all the weaponry. Um, a lot of the men, the extremist men that were uh, recruited towards them. And because... Afghanistan is a free state because of the last fucking 20 years of America being there. They never developed. America left without them developing an actual government body for them to be able to regulate things, regulate their people. So they're basically living, like you said, when we talked, like tribes, right? That, that's how they kind of came up as a country. It's just it's tribes. Not enough governing bodies. This is the problem. It's like we all talk about how we hate Trudeau and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. We hate the West yeah. and all this Bro, if you have no governing body, you have no health care. You have no, like, there's obviously there's no tax getting reducted, but yeah, there's yeah. also people coming out of your door and asking you for fucking taxes, yeah. which aren't the even fair. Yeah. You're talking about, you, you're you crying about 40% taxes here or whatever the fuck, marginal 40, whatever. And over there, it's a marginal fucking 70. Yeah. And you have nothing. You're not making dick. Kay. You're fucking farmers and shit in a fucking, basically, for sure. one of the hottest areas that, very little grows in that area in that climate can i share what i know you can correct me at any point Go if ahead. i if i missed up here so from what i've seen this has been like a colossal fuck up on so many levels because the u.s came and said hey listen we're gonna pull out entirely and people are like oh yeah sure that's great you know we've been in afghanistan for so long it's time to get out there finally yeah and their own intelligence the pentagon fucking defense secretary everybody involved in that end from the states they're all like oh yeah if we pull out it's gonna take the taliban months to to, to take kabul yeah it fucking took them like two weeks well yeah i mean it they're, was like they're gonna have to sell it tragic on tragic they're like oh yeah it's like in the internal memos they're like oh yeah for sure it's not gonna be it's it's gonna be like a gradual thing like 
will pull out and then and then the afghan forces that we've trained they're going to be fine and they'll, they'll they'll hold them back for a bit yeah they did not nothing huh as soon as the taliban came in afghani forces were like all right we're out and i tried looking up things from different sources so obviously your classic american ones your new york times your wall street journals or whatever yeah. I also tried going, I looked up Al Jazeera because I'm like, let's see what these guys have to say mm. about this. What I found very interesting was from Al Jazeera and actually at the beginning of the New York Times, the general like writing, like the what they were trying to project was that the Taliban were not being violent about this. Mm. Like they kind of just came in, they took Kabul, they basically went to the Afghani soldiers and like, listen, you don't want to do this. You haven't been paid for two months, right? The guy's like, no, here's a hundred bucks, go home no need to fight and the guys were like all right we're out plus a lot of the Afghani forces were scared that they were gonna get like fucking murked because they've been supporting the west for so long mm. that Taliban was gonna come in and kill them and their whole families yeah so they're like listen whatever if you want to take us 100 bucks all right we're out so they just steamrolled right through right and that's why you had so many people rushing to get out because everyone was so fucking scared that it was gonna be back like 20 years ago mm. and the taliban just came and like murked everybody mm. but it wasn't it hasn't really been the case so far and so from what I saw at the beginning from, from the New York Times and then also from Al Jazeera was that the Taliban actually haven't been that violent mm. when they've retaken Kabul. They've yeah. been kind of like, all right, honestly, if everybody who wants to leave, they can just fucking leave mm. because it's easier for us because we don't have to worry about killing them and like dealing with them and like fighting them and right. out in the open. If they just want to go, they're, they're gone. And that's just one less person that we have to so deal with. So you think with. the Taliban's paying off American soldiers? Not the American soldiers, but the Afghani. The Afghani yeah, okay. the Afghanis. So that, that's kind of what I heard is that. Can I can I, can I, have a rebuttal for this? For sure. One of my rebuttal for this is this is something you're hearing from where? I'm not going to go Eddie Bravo on you, but let uh, me. Al Jazeera was, uh, that's Qatar. Uh, Al Jazeera's Qatari. Okay. So do you believe there's propaganda in all news? Sure. A lot of the stuff you're hearing, you got to hear both sides to actually learn from what's going on in the events that's, the current events that are going on. Yeah. Right? I got I got family I got you know family friends that are actually living out of Afghanistan. Where in Afghanistan? Different parts. Okay. Mostly Kabul. Yeah. Um, and you know they these are f better off out of the general public. Yeah. Okay. To the point where they have cell phones, they can communicate stuff like that. Are they rushing to leave? No. So they're fine. Not necessarily. They're not really necessarily rushing to leave because these are the same people that have a house in Iran. So are they fine? They're okay. So how do they feel about this whole thing? This is if you if you put in a video camera in front of the climax of what's going on and you zoomed in, yeah. This is the stuff that you're going to get. You're going to get this kind of production, which is which is you're going to get high dr dramatic events that happen over and over um and uh you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get people in a, in a in a panic saying oh oh my god what's going on what's going on yeah this is the thing Taliban is not a real threat to the United States period oh yeah done right this is not a real threat Afghani forces please bro please sorry bro Afghani forces are not even they don't without the help of Americans they they have they stand no chance because yeah. as small as Taliban yeah. is the Afghani Forces are even less. That, that's what we saw, right? Hundred yeah, percent. That's pretty much their primary and only governing body is the Afghani soldiers. Okay, but without the help of the United States, they're pretty much abolished. Brother. I saw videos they're of nothing. their training. Man, bad. disgusting, it's terrible. So bad. They, there's PE teachers. There's legit like this. Well, is a yeah, legit sort of yeah, yeah, PE yeah. Teachers. Yeah, I believe it. Telling people what to do. Like, yeah. imagine taking taking a PE teacher out of any high school in the Lower Mainland and being like, okay, now. You're you're a sergeant. You know, there's a video floating around of them doing a like, train exercise, and the Afghani soldiers couldn't do jumping jacks. <laughs> Stop the cap, bro. Fuck. Uh, like I wish I was kidding. So, um, one thing I gotta say though is um, these people, right? To save Afghanistan and to keep it healthy, like the last twenty years, yeah, it's not that much money and compensation that's paid towards the americans to right. keep them there because if you look at south korea koreans have been there i'm uh, sorry americans have been there for 70 fucking years oh yeah stationed out of yeah, korea yeah. right so big how, bases. how much big big bases big. so how much does that cost them a lot of money. a lot of money right so it's not keep, just the big base they, they got a fucking 
one of the biggest fleets, right. the U.S. Navy fleets, is yeah. right outside Korea. Right, absolutely. And to keep people um, safe, you could say that it's almost worth it to have Americans there because what that does is is keep the peace in that Middle Eastern area. Plus, if you're an American or you're American governor or you know president or whatever, whoever yeah, dictates yeah. these things, because we know for sure this government shit is a puppet. Yeah. Um, so you're saying it's like a deterrent. To not violence. only that, not only is it deterrent, but it's also a benefit for them to to have the upper hand if they ever want to take over a place like Iran. Oh yeah, sure. Right now you pulled out, you're gonna let China and China's ally of Iran. So why do you, why do you think the U.S. pulled out of Afghanistan? Just too long in one area, or what? Can't they, have been they, that. They pulled out. They pulled out because there's not enough resources and there's not enough benefits for them to be out of that area. Which is funny to me because just to have. A room, at, you know, guys that deal drugs. You know what they do? Uh, like here, or where? Lower Mainland. Okay, because that's my experience mostly. Yeah, yeah. They have a place downtown. Yeah. Just like a studio suite. Sure. Just keep everything there. They only carry what they need to carry with them mm -hmm. while they're downtown and while they're giving out. Yeah, yeah. And then they have a house here, or an apartment here. Okay, like Tri Cities, mean? Tri Cities, yeah, yeah. or or somewhere away from downtown. Right. This is where they relax. Yeah. Less cops, less things to deal with. Yeah. And that is where they stash their shit. It's like a crack house, basically, right? <laughs> crack house in downtown. Exactly. Right. Afghanistan to America could have been a crack house in order to take over places like Iran. Right. Right. But I don't think that they have the idea to take take Iran over yeah, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Under under Biden, I don't I don't firmly believe they probably will come back to it with a different strategy. Right. But I think they've given up on this Afghani strategy to come out from that way because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they got Israel. Yeah, they yeah. Got, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. They got, you know, Yemen. They got all these places. Now they're trying to come through. Um, that being said, it's uh, it's just funny, man. It's it's just funny because you can re you can't to reallocate these funds. Yeah, yeah. it's not going to take much. Right. Yeah. It's not it's not like we're going to give back to the kids now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. It's not it's not yeah, like that. Yeah, fucking right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. What I mean, the they should. They fucking. The they, fuck they should, are we they, doing? They, they should, but yeah, yeah, right. That's happening. Another side to this, I want to say, is um, people from here. No disrespect to you. You are. You get. You try to get your information. Uh, uh, at least most educated people try to get their information from a, a reasonable source, right? Or multiple. But, but what I noticed is that um, some people, right, they try to instantly give themselves gratification and saying like they earned some type of degree that they now understand what the problems are in that area when you've never stepped outside of North America. Oh, I, I can speak to this too, actually. Right. So it's like, I want, I want you to keep going with that, but I want to talk on that. No, too. If you like, want to go ahead, you go ahead. I'm no, not, I just, I'm cause not. I don't, cause I want to keep our, I want to keep this on in Afghanistan for a bit, yeah. but you want to switch a few, over? No, no, no. Cause a few, a few like last year, yeah. there was a whole thing in Bolivia mm. where there was an uprising and the, the ex president was exiled. Yeah. There was a revolt from the people and then a new, a newly installed, uh, person of power was put in but then i mean i have legit like just like you in yeah. afghanistan i have like my aunts like i have people yeah. who live like i'm my, my, have, mo my mom is from there real first hand so, information legit first hand like people yeah. going actually out into the street yeah. tell me what the fuck's going on yeah but yet i'm being told from like my friends mm. people who like supposedly know like yeah. they read this stuff about certain things because they heard from some other reporter or some scholar i'm like that's great I got people there. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so, yeah. so keep going. I know exactly what you're saying. Because yeah, so this going. just happened to, uh, yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. And I had somebody, I'm not going to name who, yeah. but I should out you if I was a terrible person, but I'm not. Yeah, sure. But uh, anyway, I had somebody tell me, oh, I have a international relation degree degree from some like third C class like university. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? Does that mean that now you know what's going on over there because you read it in some book that was dated four years before you studied it? Yeah, is yeah. that is that true then? Because I have dudes I'm calling every week and I'm asking them, hey, you step outside, what'd you see? That's the difference, yeah, right? Yeah. So when you look at these people, the funny thing is, is they think that because they're posting something on their Instagram story or whatever, what, whatever kind of social media, now there's some type of activist. It's, it, it is called, I think it actually is called social media activism. Yeah. And it's, it can whack. be, some, it can be, it can, no, I don't want to say it's whack all the time because it can be sometimes good. Because one of the big problems in, with these kind of issues where, where like these countries go through like revolts or like 
these crises, if if there's no visibility at all from a global scale, then they're totally fucked. Like if in there if they're in the dark and no one's seeing this shit at all, then they're in some real trouble. So th- there there is a benefit to having presence globally, like having yeah. kind of some kind of like light shine on you so that people can see what's going on. So we saw similar things happening in Hong Kong where the activists there, like these guys were protesting fucking daily. You you saw the shit back then. Yeah. Absolutely. Being able to share that so people around the world can see it is big. Huge. Same thing happened with uh, the Arab Spring. People around the world saw it. So, <laughs> right? So there, there is a ben- or like Ukraine as well. When Ukraine is going through their shit, everybody in the world saw those photos of like the square like on fire. But, well, the Ven- the Venezuela. Uh, okay. So what he's mentioning is very interesting. Backdoor Bosnian is mentioning uh, Venezuelans. So he's South- saying, yo, yo, what about the Venezuelans? Hector? So there's something interesting to be said about South America in general. I mentioned Bolivia, but because our boy over here is mentioning the Venezuelans, we'll talk about them quickly. So the Venezuelans, were you aware at all? Like what you saw? The don't include co- me because I don't know shit. But did you hear? No, because this, this kind of almost adds. To the I point. heard. I've so, heard. Yeah, so that's yeah. good because that means that at least people are it's were been global. About it. yeah. yeah. So Venezuelans had an issue where their president, who was president for a very long time, Hugo yeah. Chavez, Ubu. one of uh, Fidel Castro's boys, like they, were, they were like this. Rest in peace. He died. Then the new guy came in and somehow, and I'm not super well versed in the OG Venezuelan politics, but somehow Hugo Chavez maintained a sense of stability in the country. Yeah. Even though he was corrupt as fuck and he was totally exploiting the country's resources and the oil. and like, You got to rep your set. Listen, even though he had a, b- a bunch of weird shit going on, he managed to keep the at least, at least, the illusion of stability. That's right. Keep the nutsacks high, baby. Even if it maybe it wasn't, the illusion was there. Yeah. As soon as he died and the new guy came in, it didn't take very long for that illusion to just fucking disappear. Gone. The ball sacks dropped. The Botox and ran away. And all of a sudden, everybody saw what was behind the curtain, and inflation went fucking sky high. A.K.A. from my layman boys, that's a fucking long-ass wrinkly ball sack. That's the equivalence. Basically, to the point where you couldn't pay to buy a loaf of bread with the money that you had because the money was basically worthless. Like it Damn, was son. you could have had 50 G's in the bank. Yeah. But in two weeks time, that 50 G's was now basically worth five G's. Yeah. Like it was, ba- it was it was like yeah. really like they went. Through, it was it was terrible. That's never happened in Canada. No, never, dude. Like this hasn't happened in any anywhere in the Western Hemisphere. It was it was to the point where people legitimately couldn't buy food to fucking mm. eat. So people were starving. People were dying. Like starting to die because they were starving. There were no really jobs to go around because nothing was paying anything. So people were like trying to figure out what to do. And so what my, what my boy here mentioned is he actually sent me something the other day. At one point, some Venezuelans actually got a bit smart about this. Mm. And have you heard of the game RuneScape? Of course. Who has course. it, right? So anybody interested at all in more detail of what I'm saying, look up Venezuelan RuneScape money. Yeah. What they started to do was because they realized that obviously RuneScape is an online global platform where everything's equal. It doesn't yeah. matter where you're playing from. It's right. the same. In-game same. currency is the same. These guys started mining in-game resources to then sell for American money. So then convert back to start making, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 damn. And they, they did it for about, I think it's a year. I think they did it. Wow. Um, And then they, they, they got shut down, obviously. But good for them. Man. Yeah. That's a way out. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, it's crazy. Just to, I just want to take this away. And uh, there's five people following us. I know this is where fucking wild. Shout out. But, um, if you're not following us, make sure you just follow us and click that like, click that follow and shit and just follow us, man. I, think on, on YouTube, Twitch, I think on Twitch, Twitch it's just uh, follow. TikTok, we're Instagram, Funny But Foul Podcast. Um, back to regular programming, man. Continue with what you're saying. Yeah, so the Ven- that, that was cool about what the Venezuelans did. Bolivia, back on the social media activism shit. When Bolivia went through their shit, they had a left-leading indigenous president for yeah. about pff, eight years, I think. Right. He went through two election cycles. And in the third... Depending on who you ask, the third one was basically a fraud in the sense that it shouldn't have happened because okay. he had to rewrite the Constitution in order Damn. to allow himself to have a, th- a third term. Whoa. Because, you know, in the States, there's a maximum two-term two, limit. Two-term. So to, in order to have two-term a... Two-term th- Trump, baby. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the Bolivian guy, same kind of deal. And that that's Constitution thing got approved in a very, like, murky, like, kind of shady way. Mm-hmm. So pe- some people weren't down with it. Yeah. And then when the election went through, people weren't down with that either. So they started, like, 
protesting against them, being like, hey, listen, like, fuck you. You got to go out. So I have family, right, mm. who, who who was down there. Yeah. And they went to the rallies. Mm. Physically, they sent me photos. They're like, right. we're at this rally, right like, there. whatever, blah, blah. I was being told yeah. from people here that there were, like, American agents being planted to, like, to – like th- th- this was an American play to throw out the left leaning guy Some to put Putin in a right. Shit. Yeah, yeah, like throw out the left guy, put in the right leaning guy because that that would serve America's interest. Those YouTube bots, man, showing and I'm up like, in person. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm like, I get what's what's what you're saying. Yeah. But to just discount all the efforts that these people are putting into their fucking their efforts. Yeah. Is some bullshit. Yeah. And I started taking it personally because I'm like, I have my aunts, my cousins. They are there. Yeah. They are supporting that cause. Yeah. Don't tell me that they're. That this isn't coming from the people. Right. Absolutely. And so when I heard that, I was like, that, that's on, when I was son. like, what the fuck? Right? Cut the cap. And I understood that, yes, there's going to be some shit where technically it's there, there's like there's an agenda everywhere. So I get it. It wasn't like the cleanest thing because they, they did actually overthrow the guy and like he had to go into exile in Mexico. And like it was all, right, it was right. all like very murky. And then they had to replace him. Some other right leaning person came in. But when I heard that shit about like people from here who have no idea who yeah. have never talked to me about bolivia ever yeah never. That, that was the other thing yeah it's one thing if let's go back to this person who said it's like international relations it's one thing if you're to say i've studied international relations for like you know 10 years and i've been to afghanistan three four times yeah and I, i'm in touch with some of the people down there and blah blah, blah. you're active, Yo, that's legit right that's i can't talk part. against that yeah. if you're telling me you got institutions you work with there yeah that are talking to you and updating you and asking you for help and like how to do you're a journalist at that point. You're well, not only that, but you're, you're, you are clearly active now. Yeah. Even if you're not physically there, you're active. But if you've never talked about yeah. this place before, and you're picking up third party news sources. And, and now you're saying that you know about this because you're going to pull up some like meme from Facebook or, or like your fucking credentials that didn't have anything to do with this. Yeah. C now, class fucking university. What, even if it was an A class, yeah. Who the fuck cares? If you got that ten years ago, yeah. but you haven't utilized it in this area ever until now, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, you don't know shit because you can't compare it to a dude. What does that, that mean? Has family or has a legitimate ties with the with the with the space that we're talking about, with the territory we're talking about. For sure, we actually have significant ties with that area. That's why we speak. Otherwise, if there was something going on in Ukraine. You think you think you're gonna hear a peep out of me? Fuck no! I'm not yeah. gonna say yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But when you're coming at me sideways, thinking that your fucking stories are you know the driving factor of you know finding out what's going on here, let me tell you one thing. Sorry to break your bubble. First of all, you're not special. A lot of people that just want attention, they rely on the news and they just post about it. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people fucking do that. You're not an activist that way. Your fucking credentials mean dick because you're not using it. You're not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're reading about some shit. So what is that fucking? Anybody could read about it. What does that have to do with your fucking credentials? Yeah. Right. So it's like coming at me sideways like that or coming at you sideways like that. It's like it's whack because those people going back to a while back when we're talking about mm-hmm. um, being able to evaluate yourself and evaluate a situation. Yeah, those yeah. people are out of fucking touch. They're delusional, basically, right. because they're thinking, OK, I read something somewhere, but this guy is from that area, from that region with people there. Yeah. He doesn't know anything, but I know you're fucking delusional. Get out of my face. You're a hoe. Yeah. Um, going from that to what just happened tonight, baby, with the white caps, man. And then fucking actually. Well, what was happening while I was here? Yeah. You tell me about while, that. While you were here, I just want to take this time and thank fucking Manny Pacquiao, man. This guy's. Shout out to the Filipinos. 42, 43, Filipino. You know, you guys are savages. You guys are, you know. Your women are sexy. I've dated some Filipino, very forgiving oh, yeah? women. Oh, for sure. Fat asses. You know, very oh. giving and submissive. I'll tell you. Some it of comes- them are hoes. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> some of them are hoes. I've met the hoes and I met the nice girls. And I'll, I'll tell you, both professionals. No hard feelings, none of that. Yeah, yeah. But the one thing that I actually saw across the board was the sub- how, how they were so submissive and they were okay. They understood their role. Mm. Okay. Armand's going to be paying for dinner. I'm going to be sleeping over at his place. He's going to cook me whatever, or he's going to, you know, buy me dinner. We're going to fuck. We're going to wake up. I'm going to clean the house. He's going to go to work. I'm going to come back, see him in the afternoon. Sure. 
No words were talked. Yeah, yeah. But me, at that time, I wasn't. I, I that's not what I was looking for, so I didn't go far. Yeah. But yeah. what I'm saying is, they understood their roles, which was super smooth, no problems. Right. And we're not talking about one or two. We're talking like five to seven. Sure. And they were all the same. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to you. Back to fucking Pacquiao, man. Uh, that's it. That's it for Pacquiao. That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, Tell me about it. So I'll, have to, I'll have to watch it. First obviously. four or five rounds, I'd give it to Pacquiao, 10-9. Yeah. And then I would say... Did he just crash? The guy's 40 fucking three, bro. So did he just crash after that fifth well, round? Well, yeah, man. The guy's 40 fucking three. But I'll, 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 I'll tell you. The other guy's name, I can't fucking pronounce it. It's like <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Exodia. Exodia, whatever the fuck. That guy, honestly... One thing I gotta say, side side note, dying piece of a fiance. <laughs> Shout out to her. Okay, sure. Um, but that aside, this guy was in the pocket. He he hits way harder. The guy he was facing was probably five ten, Cuban black guy. That's dangerous. Power, younger, faster, more body shot, more head shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he basically found a spot for his right cross. Which was that was that was a determining factor of the whole fight. That was it. That was it. It was the right Shit. cross. Did anyone, that was, did anyone get dropped the whole fight? Any no, down? but but a lot of a lot of a, a lot of uh, you know stumbles. A lot of like Pacquiao got stumbled uh, like I would say three okay. times. Okay, yeah, yeah. Noodle, and then uh, noodle legs a couple times. Yeah, and then uh, but shout out to him, man. He did he did the best he fucking could. Do you think this is it for Pacquiao? Like, I, do do you think this is probably his last one, or do you think a couple more? I money. think the guy is you, at that at that age and him doing it as long. I would say he is delusional. He has that fighting mentality where he's like, I still got one more. I, I was going to say, yes, but can he still compete? I know he lost no. this one, but can he still no. compete? No, okay. not 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 how he performed tonight. Right. Not how he performed tonight. Because you got to understand this was the last one he did was two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, the guy. When you go from 34 to 36, like when Nick Diaz got fucking suspended and yeah, yeah. cut. He went fought for like four years, I, I think. I know that. That's crazy. Now he's coming back. Shout out to fucking Nick Diaz. And Ronnie but Lawler. Yeah. Lawler, bro. We'll be, here. we'll be here for that live, guys. So make sure to check that out when we... Uh, Absolutely. When, we, when um, it comes around. We're going to go live at probably 7 or 7.30 for that one. Yeah. Um, YouTube or Twitch? What are we doing for that? We'll see if we can figure out both. We, we're going to try for both, guys. And we're if not, we'll, we'll, we'll do the Twitch because a lot of our... Oh, we're, I guess we'll do that too, huh? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, too. we'll do that too. We'll, we'll do one more. Um, yeah. So, so I think that's it for fucking Pacquiao. I think he's gonna probably push in one or two, but it's not gonna be in his favor, and he just doesn't have. Uh, <laughs> Yo, shout out to Hop Gatling, bro. Shout out, man. Shout out to Good you, brother. seeing you all the way from fucking Australia, Australia, bro. Savage. This guy's a fucking savage. Um, yeah. So we're gonna do that. One thing I gotta tell you guys though, the YouTube fucking um, what? The YouTube stream is garbage. You're compared. garbage. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm quality garbage. <laughs> I think I'm uh, high value man garbage. I shut the fuck up. I think yeah, you're right. We were comparing the streams. The YouTube is not as crisp as Twitch. Yeah, and cr so, and the thing with tw Twitch, it has uh, it has uh, way better. You could clip it right away. You could do so many different things on yeah, Twitch that you can't do on. Even though it's not as big, yeah. it's growing way faster. I think. We will try for both. Just anyone, if if you guys prefer one of the, other, we will try for both. But the, the if we can't do both, we will prefer to do it on on Twitch. So yeah, so just yeah. notes for that. Um, going to what fucking backdoor Bosnia said about Jake Paul, man. Yeah, Jake Paul. Honestly, I would say if if you wanna if you wanna bet on Jake Paul, I'd say you're if if he, if he wins if, if the odds are like looking nice. Put money on Jake Paul. Yeah, I'd put say. money on Jake Paul. If, if, you're the, not odds, win if much, the odds, if the odds are good, you're not gonna win much with Tyron because if yeah. he wins, you're not winning much. Yeah, and yeah. if he loses, then then you just fucking you just lost money, then whatever. Bro. Right. So that being that, what do you think is gonna happen? I so twenty twenty ninth. Yeah, it's like two yeah. weeks. Next week. Next week. Next, next Sunday. Sunday. Next, next Sunday. Sunday. Right. Yep. I think Woodley takes it. I Yo, think we got to do the stream on Sunday then. Oh, that's true. Well, yeah. of course, yeah, we're yeah. doing it live. Um, I think I think Woodley takes it. I think he'll get surprised though. I think he's gonna. I think Jake Paul's gonna show him more than he's expecting. Yeah. Because I think anybody, even if even if Woodley, because you know all these fighters, whenever they go into the fight, they're like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not underestimating him because you know blah blah blah. I train for all these fights. There's always like we're human. 
we're always going to have this like inherent bias that we have. So even if like, let's say if tomorrow, if next week we were to have a fight, me and you, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, you're better, yeah. Uh, but you're, you, you still know that you, just, you have to prepare for it. Like you just have to, can I, well, like, anybody, hold on. I think that's a bad, that's a bad thing. No, it me, doesn't matter. Me and you, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not prepping. No you offense. Oh, no so you, you don't want to get GSP then. I, I'm not prepping for fighting you. You don't want to get GSP. What do you mean? See that that's the risk. Because GSP and Matt Sarah, mm-hmm. same shit. Yeah. It happens all the time. These guys one moment they'll slip and they're like they won't take it seriously and then they get caught by something that they didn't expect because they're like, if I fight this guy ninety nine like a hundred times, I wouldn't ninety nine. Mm-hmm. But you're gonna take a chance on that one out of a hundred? You might. Whatever that odd you think is, could be one, two hundred, a thousand, whatever, do you take that chance of you because there always is a chance. There's always a chance. Always. Yeah. So the the very, very best yeah. take no chances. Right. They're like, fuck it. I don't care if I'm fighting a bum on the street tomorrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna fight him as if I was fighting the champ. Yeah. Because that's that's how I take care of my shit. Yeah. I don't care if he's like <laughs> bottom of the barrel drunk or like this is the fucking double champ we're fighting. Right. Okay. The other guys will take that chance because they're it's it's natural. You're mm. going to because you're like I don't need to. I already. I, I know what I do. I know mm-hmm. what that guy does. I don't need. To, I don't need to like take him any more seriously than I would the other guy. I got a little rebuttal for you. Sure, go ahead. Okay. No disrespect. I, no, I, I know, dude, but like as a as a as a friend that I've known sure. you, I used to hate you. I I love you, man. You're sure. a good fucking solid guy. No disrespect, but me, Jake, and Tyron mm-hmm. is not like me and you at all. That's not the point, though. I understand completely. Yeah. I understand. But you're gonna completely. make it that point anyway. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> if that's not the point, I'm not even gonna go into it. Yeah. I 100% agree with that because these guys are both training. These guys are yeah. both pre- prepping. Yeah. Tyron doesn't have a good chin and Jake is is coming up so he could be a fucking surprise. It could be it could be a fucking you know those fucking videos where it's like oh you, you ever seen these Good where they, they they it's a TV show, right? And they put these transgender ladies Yeah, yeah. in a club and they no, get these I, that, guys that I haven't seen actually. No. They get these guys Yeah, yeah. to pick up girls there mm-hmm. but the guys don't know which ones are which oh uh, okay right so suddenly you're talking to a girl for an hour under these dark fucking and, lights and switch boom you come out you see the light you see the adam's apple holy shit surprise dude. surprise surprise, you're, surprise. You're, 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 jake fucking paul surprise surprise you're in thailand you know what i mean let's read some of these fucking uh chats oh, yeah. right here uh we got backdoor bosnian saying jake's right one there, and a half right there right there uh, read that read that last one read that paragraph Okay, with Hobgoblin, it says a few months back, Mark Hunt fought uh, this ex rugby player that was done some cele- celebrity boxing and lost. Didn't train or eat properly. Honestly, thought he'd know him out in a one punch, and the other guy dragged him into the ladder rounds, and Mark Hunt just gassed out and quit. Right there's that's one toughie. example. Right? That's a tough that, that, That's the shit. So. That was crazy because I think I saw an interview with GSP where he he brought that up with the Matt Sarah thing. Mm-hmm. He's like, after that, he's like, I will never again in my life do that. He's like, I don't. I, don't, I believe. I, I, be, I believe. Sorry to cut you off. I yeah. believe hundred percent in this. If it's these guys are both fucking fighters, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah 100%. Well, well, there's one. They're not. Fighters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that example right there. That guy's not. But a fighter. that's one. That, that that one might be. I that that's true. I mean that that's still closer than this because this that, is that, closer. That, that that's an ex rugby player, but still ex rugby player. Those guys are savages, bro. But you're still talking about Mark Hunt, which is also a rugby player, basically. Yeah, yeah. but Mark fucking Hunt. How many times did he get knocked out? Like once in his life. Mark Hunt. Yeah, has been locked, knocked out once. Seriously, like not once in his life. Mark Mark Hunt has Mark been Hunt. Knock, knocked out once. At yeah. least once. More yeah, than once. once. Mm-hmm. Okay, you, well, you look, keep look going. that up. Look we, that up. We, we keep going. Yeah, keep like, going with what you're saying. He was fa- like he's world famous chin. Hundred percent. Yeah, but keep going with what you're saying. No, no, that that, that was it. That was just adding to the point of, of what I said about these guys. It, all it takes is these guys to not take it seriously one time, and then they get caught by some bullshit. And if if you're fighting like an equal ranked fighter that's you, fine. No one's really gonna hate on you for it because like you slipped once, whatever. But the other guy's super dangerous. But if you take that same mentality with somebody who's not at your level. And then you get caught with some bullshit. Now everybody's going to focus on that because they're like, how the fuck did you get caught and lose to that guy? Right. So if Woodley has that slipping moment where he doesn't take Jake seriously for like, you know, a round or like uh, even like 10 seconds mm-hmm. and he gets caught by some bullshit because if he doesn't take him seriously, Jake might not throw anything. It might just be like, well, there might just be clinching, whatever. 
But if in that split second where Woodley's not taking him seriously and Jake actually throws something with some power to it, <laughs> and you're get and you get caught to that, Jesus man, that could be really bad for Woodley. So that, that's what you want to avoid. You don't want to like have that moment where you're like, yeah, fuck it. Okay, so I have a, a correction on yours. He's sure. been knocked out three times. One by um, our boy Malvin Manhoof. That's the original one. That's the uh, K1 shit. Yeah, that's and a then, strong And uh, then afterwards, uh, he lost to... Um, he's Roy been TKO'd, TKO'd a lot. K- that's one. The KO punch was the, 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 Junior, the, fam- the famous Dos one. Junior Dos Santos. Spinning hook kick. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was a knockout. Alistair over him as well. That, that, oh, that was, was a knee. knee. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so he's been knocked out at be least a, three be a times. Via punches, never. Yeah, but he's yeah. been TKO'd a lot. He's been TKO'd a lot. A lot. Submit a lot. Okay, don't, even, don't even talk about submissions because that's not the point of this, obviously. We're talking about like KO no, punches. No, no, I, I know, I know. Because I'm talking but about this guy's a strong three. ass chin. Like, yeah, that's something yeah, like Mark generally. Hunt. Yeah. Is no one is having like can, as, can we look up this can we look up this rugby guy though? Because I, I think we're we're underestimating this rugby guy. I don't think we are. This guy's sure is strong rugby guy. He's not a fighter though. No, I, I understand, but like any as you said, right? Everybody has a um I just that, that no, just click that. You, you already on. you already no, go back one page. You, you, think just, so? you had it. There's the first one right there, yeah. Loses pro boxing return. Yeah, but I I, I want to see what this rugby guy looks like. You'll see it. Right there. That's the guy? Yeah. He's half his size. Jesus. I don't know why that happened. See, that's one of those things, like you said, Actually, right? You know what? Hob Gadling. I mean, we're, we're live here. Let's go. Yeah. Hob Gadling. Did you watch this thing? Did yeah, Hob Gadling. Can you fucking... Did you can, see this? Uh, can you tell us what you fucking know from that area? What's going on, man? What, did uh, did you watch that fight at all? Did you... Any insight on that? Did it look like it was close at all? Like, what the, what the fuck happened there? I know you said gas. Can Woodley actually throw combos? Yes, he can. It's not the same kind of distancing that you would have in a boxing match. But I've seen his sparring and I've seen his um, like bag work and it it looks you could activate that right. It, Woodley is not the same guy as like Askren where he he has no no that's true that's true no striking. I, th- I think that you would actually you could actually oh, just my bad you no, could okay. actually make the argument that Woodley primarily relies on his punching ability exclusively. He's not a combo guy though. He's not a combo guy, but there's no not real long combos going on in, a, in an MMA fight. Generally, it's not like boxing, man, where you can hit like nine combos at once. I actually you don't, don't think have the type of distancing, and you don't have the different arts are being used. You're I, using I, a guy like jujitsu guy. I think Woodley's gonna carry that here. I don't think he's actually gonna throw a lot of combos in this fight. If he's smart, he he does what he does in, in the UFC as well. W- yeah. What what's Woodley's strongest thing? It's counter punching. He has a fear. He has like a flurry that, as well. His, his counter hook is like dangerous. Yeah, I, I the think thing that's I worry about with, with Woodley is him gassing out early because he's got a fair bit of muscle mass over Jake. That's Jake. also why I think he won't count. He won't combo punch too much because he just gas yourself out for what? Yeah, but you also have like he's got an ego. He yeah has, yeah true uh, true. He has the idea that he is a thirty-seven year old man and he wants to prove himself yep. to a fucking. 20 20, something yeah, year old. Yeah, so YouTube it's like, a, and it's like a, it's a black against white type of thing. So you, oh, you, think, you got yeah, that race thing in there as that, well, for sure, right? For sure. Snoop Dogg's like, yeah, my brother's going to kill him, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, this yeah. and this. So 100% there's that. Um, wrapping it up, man. Yeah, tell, let's, tell let's, me something that you want to tell our young kings out there. Our, it's always with the young kings. Young kings. Watch out who you hang out with, man. <laughs> Best advice. Just... Oh, let's see. Hold on. I, I want to see it. Before I wrap it up, I do want to see what Hob Gabling said about this fight. Hob Gabling, carry me out. Oh, no, hold on. Uh, fucking terrifying for the two rounds. So he was looking f- terrifying for two rounds and was looking to knock the... Ad- yeah, that makes sense. Couldn't do it. Fell in a hole from round three. And the other guy knows a bit... Okay, so the other guy knows a bit of boxing. All right. And he was super fit. I believe that because Mark Hunt, he was never really like the fit guy in, in never. UFC. Never. Probably worse after he left. Oh, of course. Right? So he probably put on a few uh, few more Barbies. Yeah. Barbies? Probably pronounce that. Barbs. Um, pronounce make that sure you follow us on Sna- uh, on TikTok, Funny But Foul, on Instagram, Funny But Foul Podcast, mm-hmm. on YouTube, Funny But Foul, Twitch, Funny But Foul. Just give us a fucking follow, dude. Share us. Share us. Friends. Like us. Even if Let you us know. Let us know. In the in DM us. Let us know what you want us to talk about, man. We're open to all that. One thing I want to tell our young kings what you got is before you reach out with your dick into the world to grab the closest thing and 
get your fun in, get your euphoria in. Think about how much more that could multiply if you had your things in order. You're fit, you made 100K plus, you had a good balance of your life, your friends, your relations with your family, all that. You are st stability. The, the name of stability in every aspect, you are that. Once you have that, you have so much more say and so much more um, that you can ask for. And guys, generally, we turn into butterflies later on in life. We don't have the same type of clock as women. I think I actually got uh, something to add to that. One of the hardest things to do when you're young, and I, I mean, I still struggle with it now, but I've, I've definitely thought about it more, so I've, I've always tried to improve it, is balance. Yep. Balance in life is hard because, especially when you're young, it's it's, and we've mentioned this before in other yep. episodes, like, you tend to lock into something. Yep. So if you can get in a relationship with a girl, shit, all your attention is now that girl. That girl. So your, uh, your other shit falls. Dumb. So like whether it's your school or your like your other relationships with your friends or like with your family or like sporting activity, whatever, those things start to like go out of balance. Yeah. So maintaining balance while still trying to do everything that you want to do in life is key because if you can try to keep that consistent, then you're not really going to lose out on too much. So, you know, if you start going out with girls and... And then you still maintain the balance with like seeing your boys and then maintain balance with going out to the gym, keeping fit, um, doing new other activities like hobbies and like improving yourself with school or with like if you're just learning a new skill or whatever. If you can keep all that shit balanced, you'll be in a good place. Absolutely, man. Chase that balance. Don't chase that fucking bust a nut. Last thing about Hobgoblin. I love Hot that. Tip. I love that. The first part of a woman you enter is her nose. Shower and groom, young kings. I like that. Yes. We'll end up on that one. Yes. We'll end up on that. Follow us. Give us a like. Make sure you uh, you let us know what you want us to talk about, man. You got on snow.